How are you? How's life behind the shades? It's good. Yeah? yeah it's like I, the last guys when I was in the green room had the shades on, so I said, you know what? I'm going to have the shades on. It, you know, it looks good. <laughs> it looks good. On you, it works. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I um, need more things in my eyes besides the hair. I, I need glasses. You need, you need glasses? Yeah, you yeah. Put a little and, distance and between you so and the rest of the world. so very shy that I just have to. <laughs> yeah. But you're not shy at all, are you? <laughs> no. Yeah. Not really. I mean, yeah. I used to be, I think. So I was, I was listening to this record over the last few days. Yeah. This came out in Canada and the rest of the world last year. Uh, well, this version hasn't been out at all. I mean, okay. there's like a, it was like an EP, right. and then it was like uh, an ex uh, a full-length album, I guess, with like all the songs from right. the EP on it right. that came out in like December. And now this is like, this record is actually a deluxe record in Europe. Has uh, added tracks that we haven't heard before. Uh, yeah, there's four extra tracks on the deluxe record in Europe, but there's, I think, here, like, there's a bunch of tracks that people haven't heard, maybe. But what I was going to say is that, uh, you know, I, 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 first, I first got to hear your music. Uh, you, you made a record for Warners, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm listening to this record, and, and they're, they're different experiences. Each have a lot of range, uh, and with you, range, you got an incredible vocal range, but also a stylistic range on this. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. It's got a pop edge. It's got a roots edge. There are these like almost <laughs> operatic va backing vocals popping up. I think you know, like when I spent all that time being a songwriter, you know, or like I mean, I spent like like 2006 to 2009. I was in the major label system, and I wrote like in and around like 140 songs, you know. Wow. And uh, and no record came out. So. Right. You know, now, when uh, you say in the major label system, you I did. was on Island Def Jam and Universal, and and I, both things I kind of like, you know, got petered out. I got dropped, and uh, just no no record came out. So I had all these songs, and uh, I was like, yeah, I, I was kind of surprised because it was like a lot of hoopla and stuff. Like you know, when I got signed, and um, and then uh, one of the songs got recorded by the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Oddly to me, I was like, oh, okay, and. Uh, <laughs> And then it started like, uh, you know, I was kind of, uh, it was like a watershed moment of like, oh, that that can happen. You know, mm -hmm. you can write a song that's like taken by another artist. And so then uh, I got a publishing deal. I got offered a publishing deal, songwriter deal for, you know, uh, and uh, I started writing as just me, you know, like, I mean, just for other people and just like not being an artist. And that was kind of, I was really cool with that. I was surprisingly cool with that. I was not like... What's the difference? I mean, you, you working on your own material and working on material, and, and sometimes you're not writing for a specific artist. Mm -hmm. You're just writing with the idea of putting this out there and seeing where it could be placed, right? Yeah, it, it happens both ways. Like, sometimes it gets grabbed by somebody. Sometimes you're in a room to write for someone. Like, I wrote, uh, I got a song with Rihanna, and that was, we were in the room to write for her. Mm. So that was interesting to me, you know, and I is was... It, uh, is that what they sometimes call a songwriting camp? Bring everybody yeah, together yeah, and exactly. see, like, what comes out of it? Yeah, and it's uh, it's interesting, and, and, um, and you know, you just have to kind of go with it. I mean, I don't know, it's like, I tried to, uh, I went through different phases as a songwriter, you know, I, I felt like I started, I kept trying to write exactly for someone, you know, mm. and thinking I was getting in their head, you know, even to the point where I would read something about someone, like a relationship thing about an artist that I then had to write for, and I'd be like, write this heartbreak song, and then I would actually meet them or write with them later, and they'd be like, no, it was actually a great thing, like, you know, we're friends, I was like, oh, great, okay, so <laughs> you're not heartbroken at all, well, so never mind, I wrote a song about how great you are, you know, <laughs> and it was just like a very interesting kind of thing, and then I, I kind of morphed into a... Uh, being more like going universal, you know, for like songs like that. And then... Uh, universal meaning like I'm going to write this song and, and, and yeah. anybody who feels this way can yeah. latch on to it. And that, you know, I, you can't just do that. I found that, like, oddly, I think that's what started separating my writing for other people with my own writing because mm. I would really go uh, delve a little deeper into like more specific scenario kind of things and things that were like more um, pertinent to my life. Well, let's backtrack for just a second. You mentioned you had a song that you wrote for Rihanna. Mm -hmm. uh, that song uh, was a top 10 hit. Mm -hmm. Not a bad thing at all. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it kind of, it was the last single released on Loud, and it was like, you know, as a songwriter, you're always kind of like, kind of like, and it was supposed to be the first single, and oh, they wow. kept me waiting. I was like, ah, next, it's the next, no, no, no. <laughs> and it was finally the last single. And then it was, uh, every other single got like, a lot more time out there, but it, this s single, since it was the last one, mm. that single, um, uh, what's the, what was that, the huge song, um, 
gosh, from the next record came out and just like absolutely crushed. It was like one of the. Um, oh, your song came out and then. The, yeah. The momentum yeah, is killed by. Yeah, the, the, no the, one knew that she was to drop a record that fast, you know. Right. So, but uh, but yeah, you never know, man. And songs come and go very. And and at that point, uh, had you. You'd been based in New York. Had you moved to L.A. at that point, or? Yeah, I well, I was going back and forth to L.A. when I was on in you know in that major label deal system mm. for like you know three years, and uh, I was going back and forth to write. And then I built such roots there. And then as a writer, there were just so many more opportunities right. in L.A. I mean, I think there's slightly more opportunities now in New York too, but really, there's so much writing there. Like I was able to kind of, I would write. I would do two sessions a day every day for a while, you know? Right. And uh, here, I got a third of that work. Like, And, and I know a lot of people uh, who are, are in bands uh, who have drifted out to Los Angeles yeah. for the purpose of songwriting. You must you must know plenty of folks as well. Many, yeah. And it's, uh, I don't know, I, I feel, um, for some reason, I feel the muse very strongly out there. Mm. I don't know, what, and sometimes I attribute it to here, like I associate New York with the struggle a bit, uh -huh. um, even though some good things did happen, but... I don't know, it's very vertical here. I feel like, it was odd, I didn't notice it until I moved out there, and then I was like, ah, oh, I felt a little, like, more open and... More horizontal, more yeah. space to drive you know, around. It's, it's once, you know, it's nice to be horizontal when you're vertical all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 uh, it was I, nice. I suddenly had an image, so I had to bring myself back here. Um, <laughs> yeah, <I went> back. <laughs> yeah. um, so you made the transition, you were living out there full time and devoting yourself to songwriting. How'd you come back to being a recording artist? I, you know, I, as I was um, writing, there was, a, there was this night at this, uh, this place called Bardot out there, and it was like a live band singing, you know, covers, and, and me and my songwriter friends would go there, and I'd jump up and sing a song or whatever, and then I started doing it every week, you know, it was like my night out or whatever, or one of my many nights out, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's like my one night out, you know? <laughs> it's my one singing night out, yeah, so I just like, you know, went, and then people started coming to see me, and uh and I don't know, I just like kind of fell in love with that again, but like um, I was getting some new management as a songwriter and they were like, you know, like we listen to your old stuff and I just feel like you should maybe, you know, not stop being an artist. And, and, I, and you know, it was weird. I was starting to play the ukulele just for myself, just for fun, just like kind of like, and it, it kind of just like made me fall in love with music again. Mm. I started like playing covers, singing covers. And for me, um, whenever I... Uh, delve into another artist's work, I, it always kind of lifts up my songwriting and I, it's like almost like I snowball it into my kind of, you know, uh, what, I'm, what I'm feeling or how I'd like to write. Like a lot of the music on this was inspired because I sang, I was asked to sing a, um, a Paul Simon tribute at Carnegie Hall. Mm. And I sang Slip Sliding Away. And I wanted to sing that song Still Crazy. And I was just like really like looking at all his work from then and uh, and it had this very kind of adult love song kind of thing, but not in like, like just very like poignant um, observations of what happens in your first like adult romance. Not you know. and, and, and the amazing thing, of course, is uh, at that point, those were kind of adult songs, but yeah. that was like one of the biggest records mm. of that exactly. period. Exactly, it was like a pop song that was like about like, Bumping into your yeah, old yeah, lover on the street yeah, last and night. Being I mean, like, it sounds it sounds you, a little bit like a text. Yeah, and you're you knew you were like the, like you tore each other up. Like you really like you loved and hated this person so much you could barely stand it. You know, and I I was fell in love with that idea. You know, and so like things like that like inspire me all the time. So I think when I was singing all those songs at this club, I just was like. I was just on fire, you know, and then uh, so I just started writing for myself with the ukulele and just feeling really inspired. And then um, I wrote like this song called Into the Wild. And uh, and then I, I got signed to Warner Brothers again as an artist. And um, now the ukulele, that yeah. wasn't your instrument growing up. No, no. What, I what just, was your instrument growing I, up? I wasn't more my voice. I, I didn't really think I was going to do this. So like huh. I started playing guitar like later. And then uh, and I, I love guitar. I still play it. But I just like the ukulele was just kind of my because I feel like when you go to a songwriting session, when you bring a guitar, everyone's like, <laughs> you know, like, like, you yep. <laughs> you know, like it seems so like seems kind of serious. Yeah, it and seems like, so presumptuous and yeah. serious. It's like you know, like people don't really write like that all the time, even though they do. But it just seems like you're kind of setting the tone of like, I'm going to write this on guitar now. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I just and the ukulele was just like like almost like a joke to right. people. I just like put it there and like sometimes like even on like big like urban songs, I like, go in the corner and write lyrics 
to it, like just with the chords, so I didn't have to listen to the thump too much, like more, because it was just like you listened to that all day long. So I don't know, I just like kind of like it was an off the cuff thing. So the UK has to bring a more playful vibe to those situations. Yeah, and then it, but it also was a very serious in instrument to me. I wrote, I've written some songs that like are kind of dark and very serious on it. I, I don't know, I just fell in love with it. It just like kind of spoke to my soul, you know, and it was, and it was lovely to fall in love with music again because being in the major, I had, indie deals before that, being in the major label system like that, like, I say it lightly, like, oh, I wrote 140 songs in three years and I didn't put a record out. That's not, didn't feel great, you know what I mean? And, and but like, yeah. I mean, it's like going to the prom 140 <laughs> times and not getting in, right? Yeah. Not getting in the front door. Not getting any, you know what, you know what I mean? This that is like, too, sure. No that. limo back seat stuff. No, no limo, no slip sliding yeah, no. away. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Woo! <Anyway. laughs> and we're off. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I just, you know, I but I but the window out of that, you know, room was like the songwriting, and I, so I didn't get a t time to like really dwell and and feel bad. It was like I just kept going into the songwriting thing, and then, it, and I've watched a lot of artists do this. They go, and they songwrite for a while, and then they they it brings them back to their artist career. Yeah. Very interesting and yeah. and inspiring, you know, because yeah. it's really all about songs. Like to me, there is no uh, no rest, and that's that was one very freeing thing I felt like when I realized that like whether I write a hit song or not a hit song, I have to write another song. Because if you write a hit song, everybody wants another hit song, <laughs> you know. And if you write, write a shit song, everyone wants another hit song, you know. Um, you 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 made this record for Warner's. Uh, it, it does feel listening to it now like. Somebody said, hey, you write hit songs. Will you write some for us? Yeah. Oh, the last record. Yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I felt like that was like, a, it got like, um, someone's like, it got greedy in a way. Like, it, it's way overproduced. And there was just like, I felt like the landscape of that record got um, destroyed for me. Hmm. You know, like, I've been through like a lot of like twists and turns and, and a lot of deals, obviously. And I still... I, you're not prepared for how things go down. You know, I have a little bit of a people pleaser nature sometimes yeah. in that regard, even though I seem like I'd be like, no, <laughs> but I like, you know, I like a good vibe, you know, and um, so I think I gave up some songs and and it got too samey, you know, and then I, I was like, sorry for that, you know, and, and just like, and you know, a voice is a very like tenuous kind of like fragile thing and I feel like too much production on a voice on my voice mm. was the wrong thing and it just just got out of my hands you know mm. and and no no hard feelings I mean shit happens you know what right you right but but the interesting thing being that that this record which is more varied and, and maybe yeah. more more reflective of yeah who like you we are kept, and what you're about yeah the this, guy, this produced a, a, a hit over yeah and right? the guy that produced this produced a lot of my other stuff that the other guy reproduced the other guy the, the, well, the I say, guy. Yeah. Well, I no names <laughs> yeah, uh, but, so, but, but I, you know but like you, you got a chance to we did it our way wanted, yeah right. exactly and it and it worked and and it feels really nice like it's very satisfying and uh and you know so I, I, I had read a, a piece in Billboard that, that Lost on You became this surprise hit growing out of Greece. And, yeah. And at one point was the yeah. number four shazam song in the world. A, yeah. A stat that kind of sticks with you, actually. <laughs> it was very interesting. I was, you know, I, I got, I, I played Lost on You and Muddy Waters and mm. a song called Strange for, for Warner Brothers. Mm. And, and there was, because it was a new regime and they dropped me <laughs> like it, like three weeks later. And then I got picked up by a little label that I loved called Vagrant. Right. That I always wanted to be on, you know, it's really what I wanted to be on before I signed to Warner Brothers. And, uh, you know, we were going to put the record out and just like kind of like see what happened, you know. And we did like a couple of things, you know, went high up on hi Hype Machine and it was cool. You know? And I was just like, oh, I'll tour a little bit and, you know, whatever. And then some guy, I, I was, I don't, it was like, you know, I didn't check my D direct messages on right. Instagram much for right. a while because it was, you know, whatever. And then I suddenly did. And, um, well, I, I checked when I missed out on the show. So I was like, oh, I got to check these DMs more, you know. Right. And so I, then I checked it. And the guy from Greece was like, hey, man, I run a label out in Greece. And uh, I really think your music would work here. And uh, I'd love to license it. And so can I have your your people's information because I can't get in touch with your label for some reason. And I was like, okay. But I thought he meant like he wanted to put in a movie or a TV show. Okay. He meant he wanted to license it to like sell it and in there. And then it's like, and that's a cure. That's the interesting thing. As much as you can experience as you have. And I meet people that are very high up in this business that don't know things about other things that I'm like shocked. I'm like, you don't know how that works. Wow. You know, but there's so much to know. And, and, you know, so this guy, 
put it out and it went to number one for like eight months. And then, but all these other countries started following suit. And then I haven't really been home like <laughs> since the summer. You haven't <laughs> been home. I mean, that, that was yeah. like last summer and fall, right? Into the fall. Or... Yeah, it started like I was on tour here, um, opening up an opening up slot. And then September 1st, I went to Europe and I, I literally have been back very rarely since then. And it's been like, it's just going up, up, up. And like, as far as like, you know, Places I've been playing bigger and bigger places, and it's it's been such. Yeah, a you were saying backstage weird, that the but, shows yeah. overseas right now have really been yeah popping off. Yeah, it's been wild. Uh, yeah, it's cool. This record, Lost on You, is the title track. Yeah. It's it's a little bit of a, a transitional song, uh, a song about a, a relationship and lost time. Mm. But did I read that you actually wrote it? before you, in fact, transitioned out of a <laughs> yeah. long-term relationship? Transitioned like, is a good word. I like yeah, that. Ended um, when... Yeah, I just, uh, it was like, it, that's what, so it's not exactly a breakup song. It's like the kind of shake it loose kind of song. Uh -huh. I just be like, you know when, like, you're just, like, destroying each other and you don't really know, like, and you're both, like, kind of too proud or whatever to admit it. And I feel like it was, like, that phase where I, I really didn't want it to end, but I, I knew that it was like ending and I was like kind of bummed out about all the uh, things that I, you know, lost with it and that it was lost on this person. Like they weren't seeing, mm. they weren't seeing like oh, that I it see. was like, you know. Right. Yeah, so uh, I felt like uh, it just, it just poured out, you know, and, and I didn't break up with her for like a year. After you'd written the song? Yeah. And, and was it floating around in your head? Did the song clarify that feeling for you, or was it just like after yeah. after you had broken up, you thought, oh, that's what that song means? No, no. I you knew did. what it was about. And yeah. that was the funny part. Like, she loved that song. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, she was like, I think this is a really, you know, big song. I was like, oh, good. It's going to, like, and now I'm like, I'm gonna, like, the next song I read is going to be like, thank you for my house. <laughs> 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 You're the best. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, uh, it was really weird. That's uh, that's that's really so. It's it's almost like you're you're writing the story that you're living, and somebody else is reading it and going, "Oh yeah, that's that's painful. I like it." I was with a narcissist. If you, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shh, don't. Uh, yeah, it didn't say that out loud, did you? No. no. Okay. Um, how 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 much do you draw from your life when you're writing? Uh a lot, you know, I think, but it's also, it, it tends to be like, almost like, um, I'm like, I'm a mood um, cultivator, I think, mm. you know, I feel like that's the space that I write a song from. And that, I think that's like, you know, and I could get in that, you know, mood very easily, but um, I can hear sometimes that it's other things in other people's lives sometimes, but I think 95% is from my life, mm. you know, I mean, I, I go pretty hard in relationships of, been through some stuff so I feel um comfortable and I feel like writing songs so much for so long has gotten me um more tapped in uh, where I feel like I can access it a little a little easier and and feel like like it's just resonates in my heart I don't know so um that I feel like I feel like that was like you know writing so many songs sometimes felt like so like what am I doing like this you know like I would I'd be in sessions sometimes I'd be like screaming in my head like I gotta get out of here man I just like write myself out of the room be like that's great fantastic okay bye 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 you know <laughs> but it was like um, but it really helped me you know because like when you're the songwriter you can't like be like I'm not in the mood today when you and I got to see it both because when you're the artist everybody's like kissing your butt like okay all right well if you're not in the mood okay don't no you should right. go to the beach you're right. right. Go you to should go to the beach. <laughs> you know, when you're the songwriter, you're like, I hate this kid. I don't want to write a song with them. They're terrible or whatever. And you can't be like, I'm going to the beach. I mean, you can. I have. <laughs> you know? Because I really don't care. Just, or, or it's just like, I'd just be like, I need, we need beers in here right, right now. Right. But yeah, just, uh, you have to kind of stay. You know, it's your job. So it's a little, little um, it, it became like a skill, like a school almost of, of how to, deal with you know like accessing the muse when you don't feel like it I mean, when you're not you know right. and I think that was the best thing that ever happened to me when I didn't like you know because I when I you know when I started I was like I write 13 songs put them on a CD and be like I'm a genius listen to this you know and then I started writing like you know 100 songs a year or, you know 80 to 100 songs a year and and you know maybe getting five cuts or six or seven you know mm -hmm. and uh yeah, it's a very interesting, humbling experience and, and also just, you know, skill.
are you still writing a that many songs or you know i haven't recently because i've been touring so much but i i've been in like collecting i feel it feels nice this is the first time in years that Recharging. i haven't been uh yeah that i haven't had you know a gun pointed in my head for it to, to write but i feel very inspired so that's nice you know okay